welcome to Step by Step Painting. I'm Sharon Taylor Paget, and today we are going to do a scene from Hopeland Gardens. And this is a lovely scene of called Pond and Path. This path goes around Hopeland Gardens. So today you're going to learn how to put in a pond with reflections, a pathway with sunlight, and a lot of foliage. So let's get started. Now with any um, with any landscape or seascape. The way you prepare your canvas is something I learned from a Key West artist. We're going to make a large bullseye with yellow first. So get a very thin mixture of yellow and make a bullseye on the canvas. And just a moment after I do this, I'm going to show you what this does for your painting. Okay. And then you're going to do the same thing with magenta, which is a pink color, very thin, watery color, like a watercolor. Now move quickly as you do this because you don't want the painting, the uh, paint on the canvas to dry. So you see how messy that is, and it doesn't have to be neat because you're going to spread it out. Now take your paper towel and make circular motion. Go round and round, round and round, until you get all of this smoothed out. Try not to go back into the yellow, because that will drag the magenta in there and change the color. So this is the way I start any seascape or landscape painting. Now that I have shown you this, you might be able to see some of that magenta and some of that yellow shining through. I'm going to show you another example. This is going to be our painting for June. Now that I've showed you this that's underneath the canvas, can you see that yellow bullseye and the magenta around? And as you're painting, you can decide how much of this you want to come through. This is the June example, and this is what we're going to be doing in July. Again, we started with the yellow bullseye and then the magenta all around. So um, if you are interested in doing any one of these workshops, just uh, go to the website, akincenterforthearts.org, and you can find out the dates and how to register. Okay, so now that this is just about dry, let's go ahead and sketch the design of this um, scene. Now, when I'm sketching and preparing uh, the canvas for a, a scene, I don't sketch with pencil. That's very tight. We want to be loose and painterly. So use a small flat brush like this. Let's talk about the brushes that I use just for a moment. The brushes are bristle brushes. There's an assortment of uh, large ones, small ones, and a detail brush, and also a fan brush. And really, that is all you need to do a painting. And the paints that we're going to use, let's talk about that just for a second so you have the right paints on your plate. This is just a styrofoam plate. You can go very simple with this. We have white and black, of course. Then there are three browns. There's a golden brown color, there's a dark brown color, and there's a rusty color. So you'll hear me refer to these paints as, let's use the rusty brown or let's use the golden brown. They actually have real names. I use um, Liquitex Basics acrylics. It's kind of the middle of the road. It's not the most expensive. It's not the cheapest, but they're a good grade. So these are the uh, actual technical names for this. The golden brown is raw sienna. The dark brown is called burnt umber. And the rusty color is called uh, burnt sienna. The green that we use is a medium green. It's called Hooker's Green. Don't blame me, I didn't name it. And magenta, a cobalt blue, and a medium color yellow. When you get yellow, make sure you get the yellow that looks like mustard, not a, a light yellow because that would be too cool. Colors have temperatures and you want a warm yellow. Okay, so now what we're going to do is sketch with paint. When you start out your sketch, Make sure you get a paper towel, wad it up, and get part of it wet like this. This is going to be your eraser. And now you're going to make a mauve color. 
that is kind of a dusty purple. And the reason that we're going to sketch in mauve is anytime you have a painting that has a lot of green, um, opposite on the color wheel of green is purple. And so if you actually let some of that sketch come through, it'll work for you. So here's how we make mauve. There's three steps. First, you're going to get magenta and then some blue. So that's your first step of making purple. And when you're mixing colors, mix them in just a small little circle on an area. Don't use your whole plate. Um, after you make purple, add white to it and feed it into it like this. Don't just plunk it right in the middle, but feed it in. So now the second step on this is to make a lavender color. And then finally, you use a tiny, tiny touch of dark brown to give it that mauve, that dusty purple color. So here's what you wind up with. So in sketching your, um, your illustration, your uh, beginning, the first thing you want to think about is where is the horizon? So in this scene, the horizon is back here somewhere, but it's back there under all the foliage. But that's still what you're going to think about first. So hold your brush not like a pencil. This is going to make you really tight. Hold your brush as if you were painting a whole wall. So let's say the horizon is back here somewhere. Now I want to show you how easy it is if you change your mind and decide that that's not where you wanted it to be. Take this wet paper towel and you see how easy it is to change that. That's even easier than if, if you were using a pencil and eraser. So let's get back to this now. We're going to decide where is the horizon. It's going to be right about there. Now what we're doing is getting the basic shapes of what you see, the basic design, so you have a road map of where you're going. All right, so the second thing you want to think about in this scene is there, you, there's a pond here. And if you can break things down into simple shapes, it will help you um, get the, dis, the overall design. So this overall shape is like a half of a U, like that. That's where the pond is. The path goes into the scene, starts right about here, and goes around the bend. And I think I will narrow this down just a little bit. And again, since I have my wet paper towel, it's easy to make corrections. Okay, keep this nice and loose and watery so it's easy to erase. Okay, so now we have the pond. We have the path. All right, beside this path is a hillside going up. So as you do this design, make this hillside going up. And it actually goes back in this area a little. And I can make a correction with this paper towel. Okay, there's your hillside. And now let's think about the trees that are in the scene. There's a large cedar tree right here that is hanging over into the scene. That's going to be done with just blocking in, tap, 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 tap. And when you're blocking in your overall design, you don't have to think about a lot of detail. All you're doing is just blocking in the basic shapes. So here's what we're doing right here locking in these basic shapes that goes over the pond. There's a lot of thinking that goes um, into your painting. And a lot of words that you can just talk to yourself, especially if there's no one in the room. And now you can have seen how to do this, just blocking the, in this shape. Okay, then the next thing you want to think about are the vegetation or the vegetation, the um, plants all around the pond. So to loosely put this in, there is a, a, a space right in here of dirt that you see and then the plants are growing along the edge. So let's allow just a little space for that dirt and then just start loosely putting in, suggesting that there are some plants here. Now the way these plants are, is kind of a broad leaf right here and then it goes down into like a stalk. They're pond plants. I'm sure that there's a, a real name for them, but we're going to call them pond plants.
Okay, so these are just this kind of a shape. And then as you go around the pond, there's another area of foliage. And then as you come around the edge, you can just suggest that there's foliage back there. So what we've got so far now, we've got the pond, we've got the cedar tree hanging in to the sea. Now let's do the trees that you see. This tree stands out the most. And here's the thing to remember that when you're painting, if you want something to stand out in your painting, darken the area behind it. The reason this shows up so much is because there's a dark area behind it and this is very light. Let's go ahead and sketch this in. I think it's a dogwood tree. You're just going to think about the basic shape. Notice that it goes over your composition. And that's about all you need to do just to suggest that. Now back here are crepe myrtles. There's two of them. There's one here that's got several uh, limbs going up and then there's one back here. Here's how we're going to suggest that. First, let's get rid of that. Okay, so the one right back in here will be just look like some stalks going up. And then here's the other one back here. And finally, before we get started on blocking in the painting, there's a, a tree limb back in here and it looks like, as we had a cedar coming into the scene here, looks like there's another uh, group of leaves coming in. And finally, this will all be the foliage that comes from the, um, all of these trees here and then also the crepe myrtles. So this will all be filled in. So you'll have just a little bit of sky showing here and back in here around this path way back to the back there is quite a bit of uh, as if you were looking into a, a forest or woods and so we'll just loosely put that in right there. So here's your basic design to this painting. And this is all you need to do just to get started, and that's your roadmap of where you're going to go. Next, we'll start blocking in color. Okay, now that we have the design of the painting, let's start blocking in the colors. We're going to just loosely block in colors that we see. Let's start out with the sky area and get a little bit of blue on your plate and quite a bit of white. Blue is a very powerful color and it will take over. You don't need much. In fact, that's way too dark. Anytime you are mixing colors and you've got too much, uh, just wipe it off and then just add some more color off to the side and feed it in like this. So let's block in this area right here that is the sky. Just loosely block it in and a, like we said before, you can decide how much of this under color that's on the canvas now that you want to come through. I actually like some of it coming through, adding that pink to it, and it makes it vibrate. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the sky. This is the area we just did right here. Now the second thing, let's start blocking in all of the, uh, the ground cover that we see, and it's actually bark or um, pine straw. So we're gonna go more with Let's see. We're going to go more with these colors right here, with the rusty color, the golden color, and some white to block in this area. So I'm going to put quite a bit of white on my plate, some of this golden brown, and some of this rusty color. And I gave you the technical names earlier. But if I keep saying raw sienna or raw umber, you may wonder what that is. If I say rusty color or if I say golden brown, you'll probably recognize that better. Okay, so now let's block in this area. And it can be just loose strokes. And actually, the more strokes that you have, the better to see a little texture. And again, you're just thinking about now just blocking in groups of color. The details will come later.
So just very loosely block this in. And as you're making your strokes, think about this being a hillside. So do the brush, and I'm using a medium uh, flat brush, do the strokes as they're going upward. Now one thing that is true about paintings is that if you can darken the edges, it will take your eye into the painting. So along this bottom edge, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of dark brown, and I'm going to add some of this dark brown here so that it will take your eye into the paint. Okay, now as you're looking at this, this scene, you see that it gets darker back in here because that is in the shade. So let's block in all of this land cover that we see going way back here. And as you see, it is, it's darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the dark brown and rusty color and have that go back towards the back. Now you may be wondering, if I were gonna lay down all this color, why didn't I lay this down first and then do the trees over the top? If you do that, everything looks cut out and pasted. And so what we want is a loose impressionistic painting. And so this is the best way to get that. Now, as you join this area to this area, just do some scrubbing and blending and you see how it makes a very smooth transition into the shade. Okay, so that's what we just did right there going back. Now, let's block in the sidewalk. It is actually um, kind of a peak brick that's on the sidewalk. So what we're gonna use to create that is a little bit of the magenta, which is the pink and white, and a little bit of that golden brown color. And that makes like a salmon color. And we're just gonna imply that the bricks are there. We're not gonna make every single brick. We're just gonna imply that they're there. So for the overall color, let's just block that in. And as, again, as I mentioned, when you're doing the strokes, have them go in the direction that you want the painting to go. Here we were doing a hillside, so we were making that slope. Now we're going vertical strokes like this because we're going up the sidewalk. So these are the kind of strokes that you want to make as you're going up the sidewalk. And it will go back to the distance and go away. In the beginning of a painting, after you do the initial sketch, you're just thinking about blocking in masses of color. Now, every painting has an ugly stage. We're probably there almost. So don't despair. You just keep pushing forward and you work on details at the end. The next thing I want to think about blocking in color. Let's look at this scene again is the pond area. So that's gonna be a mixture of uh, green. And if you know Hopeland Gardens, you know that this pond is not blue. It is kind of a, um, a mossy green color. So to create that color, this is probably something you've not ever seen before. You add a little bit of black and quite a bit of yellow, and that creates an olive color green. It's kind of a weird combination, but it's a nice neutral green. So you see that olive color green that we've created just with black and yellow. Very little black, mostly yellow. Now, the thing that about acrylics is that they are transparent. Anytime you're painting and you can see through to the canvas, you need to add a little tiny touch of white to every mixture. So now we're gonna add quite a bit of white though to this to make it um, a lighter green. Now see, that's just the perfect green that we wanted, and it was done with black and yellow with quite a bit of white. So let's just block in now this pond area. This is the area we're blocking in. As you're doing water, you want to think about uh, making your strokes horizontal like this. There will be um, a time when we do the reflections that we'll be doing vertical strokes, but for now, just block it all in with horizontal strokes.
and I'm just going around where the um, cedar tree is hanging over. But even if you go over your sketch, it's not going to be a big deal because you can, you can see through the paint and you can always paint back over. Okay, so now the land is blocked in, the sidewalk's blocked in, and now the pond. So now let's think about where we want to block in all of this. There's foliage way back here in the distance. It's like woods that are way back in the distance. And it's quite dark back in here. So in order to make that color, we're gonna add some dark brown to those greens that we were using. And all of this color back in here is quite dark. So let's just fill this in. Now here's the example I wanted to show you. You see how this is, you can see through to the canvas. That means you need to add a little bit more white to your mixture, then you can get your color back again. Making it opaque. So what I'm doing now is I'm having this dark area meet the land and we're going to just imply that there are trees back in the distance. Let's talk about aerial perspective. There's going to be an area right here that as things go back far away from you, they get light. That's called aerial perspective. So I'm just going to lighten this, and I added some of this sky color to this. To Actually, this is going to make it look like it's farther away. And this, all of this in the background does not show very much. So it's okay, you can take liberties and just block it in loosely. This is the land behind, that land mass behind all of the pine bark in the hill that you're seeing. Okay, so now at this point, you've got the pond, you've got the land, you've got the, the path going in. I think it's time now to start blocking in some of the trees. So let's start with this large cedar tree that we see, and that is a very dark color. If you've noticed, I've been using the same brush, this medium flat brush. You can pretty much use it for the whole thing whenever you're doing um, horizontal. You're pressing it this way. Whenever you're going to be doing uh, trees, you can just tap, tap, tap. Okay, so we want to make this color now, and it's very, very dark. Don't be afraid of the dark. This is going to be... Uh, some dark green that you have on your plate and some black. And so this is the dark cedar color that you're seeing right here. So let's block that in. And you do that with just the tap, tap, tap. And this is why you did the sketch first so that you have a road map and now you know where you're going. Later we'll use a fan brush and we'll make some individual little leaves but for now, you're just blocking in color. As you block in um, the color and start to add some leaves to the sky, do you see how you want to leave sky holes? Right in here, let's make some just little tiny strokes, little tap, tap, taps. And what that does is gives you the illusion that there is a tree there and you can see through it. Through every group of trees, every forest, unless you're deep, deep in the woods, you're gonna see sky holes. So always leave areas for sky holes. So now I'm just going back over the same sketch that I had. So when you're beginning your painting, you take your time with the sketch. That is your planning area. Once you get your sketch in, then the rest is just filling in color. Like I said, that gives you the road map to go by. Okay, so now that is the illusion of the cedar hanging over, and actually it comes over the pond a little bit right here. So let's take this out a little farther. Details will come in later. This is just the overall design. Okay, so now we've got that part in. Let's think about all of this foliage, which is associated with the trees. Let's um, create the illusion of the trees first, and later, I, like I said, details will come in later. 
I'm going to switch to a smaller flat brush to create the limbs of these trees. Let's start with this dogwood tree that we see. There's quite a bit of white in that and a little bit of black, like a gray color. And when you're drawing the trees with paint, you want to keep it very loose and painterly. So watch me do this. Now, when um, I start this tree, I'm not going to start from up here and push down. I'm actually going to, like as if I were growing it, I'm going to push here and then lightly come out with that kind of a stroke. So this is going to be where your dogwood tree is. I'm just deciding where I'm going to put everything. And then back here will be the crepe myrtles. And you're going to get into some browns here, and they really look just stocky. Every time you see me dipping into the water, I'm just adding more uh, liquid to the paint so that it flows from the brush. And I think that needs to be a little redder. So I'm using some of that rusty color and some dark brown. So you start from the bottom and work your way up. This is what we're doing right here, this area. So this is one group, and then there's another group back here. Okay, so that's that tree. There's a group of trees, and then there's a group of trees. So now we can start filling in some of this foliage that you see, and now we'll use the fan brush. The fan brush is great because you can do grasses with it if you're going up like this, or you can do a lot of the trees going off to the side using the tip. Um, I'm going to show you some different ways to use this fan brush. This color right here is very similar to what we just made with the dark olive green. We just add more yellow and white to it. So what we have on the plate right now with the dark green, if we add just more yellow and white, we'll wind up with that warmer green that you see right here. See how it's getting a lot lighter, and when I want to warm it up a little bit, just add a little bit more yellow. Okay, so my um, fan brush is quite loaded now with paint. So let's just fill in, and all you're doing right now is just filling in color. Just to give all of this illusion. You'll come back with details later. I did pick up on some of those browns, so there'll be a little bit of variation in this, so it's not all the same color. We're just covering this area. Just tap, 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 tap. You can see how this overlaps right in here. So now I've got that in. And then finally, there's an area right here that's very dark. So let's get back to the darker green. And you can use the regular green that we had plus some black. And let's fill in this area right here. See how this fan brush will do just little taps like this, and it will give you the illusion that there are boughs or like a tree hanging over. I'm just filling in this area. And there is a, a limb that you see right back in here that we'll need to put in in just a moment. We just fill this in and then we'll have that limb. Okay, so I'm going to switch back now to a small flat brush to create that trunk of the tree that you see way, way over here. Coming into the scene. Okay, so that's it on the blocking in. And of course, that looks like a big mess right now. But when we come back, we will get back to some more details of filling in all of these. Okay, we are back. And what we're going to do now that um, the major shapes have been uh, blocked in, let's uh, look at this um, area that there is some dirt right here beside the sidewalk and also some of these pond plants. So where the dirt is, that is just a, a dark brown mixed with a little bit of white. And I always have an extra mixing plate so that you're not mixing all of your paints together. So we're creating this area right here. 
and I got some brown and white, but it needs uh, just to be warmed up just a little bit. So I got some of that rusty color. And let's just fill in where the dirt goes right here beside the sidewalk. When you're filling in color, you're just getting that area in there. You work about, you think about details later. Okay, so now that that dirt is there next to it, let's create the pond plants. Okay, what we're going to create now are the plants that you see here. Because they're in shadow, they're very dark green right in this area. And then as you go around the sidewalk, they pick up on the light and then they're going to have more yellow to them. So let's start out with a dark green, a little bit of brown to it. And I'm going to have the texture of the paint be kind of watery so it's easy to draw with. So in filling these in, there's a few that are just stalky that go with an upward position like this. And then there are other ones that you press down on your brush and then uh, lightly just make a stalk. So I'm pressing down and then lightly making a stalk. And again, you see how I could see through to, this, to the canvas? That means it needs a little bit of white in that mixture. So let's get back to these and have some overlapping. It's human nature to want to line everything up like soldiers. So try to avoid that by overlapping some of these plants because the way they would grow naturally would be uh, overlapping. So we'll do some of the greenery right there. And then as you come around, it's more of a, um, I'm adding more yellow to that mixture. It's more just a uh, a mass of plants, not a mess, a mass of plants. And then over here, you have more of a, um, looks grassy. And let's switch over to the fan brush, like I was telling you, some of these techniques that you can use with a fan brush. So we can just add some grasses like that. You see how the fan brush will give that illusion? And we'll just do some tap, tap, tapping here for some plants and bring it on around. Okay, and there's not a lot of detail yet. We're just still blocking in colors. Okay, so now for the sidewalk, even though it is a brick sidewalk, we're not gonna make every individual brick. The way we're gonna give the illusion, we get a small detail brush. And the reason they call it a detail brush, it is for making details when you're signing your name or tiny little limbs that you're making. Let's uh, add a darker brown to this sidewalk area. That salmon color that we used before was, let's mix it with a bigger brush. It was um, the rusty color that we had and some brown and a little bit of white to every mixture that you have. So this is the color that we're going to use to make the cracks in the sidewalk. Now I'm going to switch back to the detail brush. And here's the, the way you create the illusion of this, of this coming down. We're going to make some lines as if, as if it's going up the sidewalk like that. And have the bricks, you're just suggesting here. But then as we start putting in the lights and the shadows, uh, this is not going to look quite so blatant as it does right now. And now let's uh, get a small flat brush and create some of these um, shadows and the, the dappled light that you see on the sidewalk. Okay, so I'm going to create that with some of the light uh, golden brown and some magenta to make kind of a pinky color right here, like almost like a salmon color. And let's add some of these, the illusion of the bricks coming in. And you only need that just at the beginning of the sidewalk or the walkway. And then as it goes off into the distance, it fades around.
and in this, uh, the uh, looks like the land or the hillside comes and meets it, so we can bring that in a little bit closer. And I'm just filling in with some of this light salmon color that we created with um, the rusty color, the golden brown and white. And I think I will right now add some more of this coming in to narrow this path. So with a medium flat brush, I'm going to bring this area in a little bit more. There we go. Now that path is much more narrow as it goes away. Okay, to create shadows, here's the thing you want to remember about shadows. They are soft and you can see through them. The edges are blurry and you can see through them. So to create shadows that we see a lot of dappled light along this hillside and along the sidewalk, let's get back to making that color called mauve. So there are three steps in creating mauve and it is making purple first with blue and magenta to make the purple. Then to that purple, add white. So it turns lavender. making a little bit more to the blue. And then to that, add the tiniest touch of dark brown. And now you have that color called mauve. So to create these shadows going across, we see some shadows down here. Now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. We're gonna lay them in, but then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna soften and blur this so that they don't stay like that. There'll be some shadows coming over in here. And of course, um, as shadows come across the bark or the, the uh, pine straw, they're gonna have more of that brown look to them. So we'll add more of a brown look to them because you're seeing through the shadows. Okay, so now you see that this doesn't look good the way it is right now. What I'm gonna do is just Wash my brush off, wipe some of the moisture off, and now we're going to come back and blend. So this is just a damp brush with no paint on it, and we're just softening the edges. So you see now how you can see through that, and it has soft edges. That's the thing you want to remember about shadows. And we can scrub and bring areas together if you have any gaps like I have right here. I'm just scrubbing and bringing that together. Okay, so now let's start on, um, let's go back to the pond and make some reflections. If you look right in here in the, in between the surface, the light that's on the top of the, the surface of the water, there are reflections of this coming into the water. I'm going to show you how to make that. The green that we had from over here, reflecting here. It's a little bit of a brown green color. And it's going right, okay, so it's reflecting from here. So there's some vertical strokes right in this area and in this area. I think it needs to be a little darker so that you can see it. There we go. And then there's some surface um, light that goes over the top. Let's do that with a fan brush. So now you have some vertical strokes in the pond, and what that is doing is reflecting from what is up above here. And then now for the surface part, it's just a lighter version of that green that you had. I'm adding some white to it. And now you're going to have some light going across the top of the water. And it's okay for you to go into the, um, into the cedar. You can go back and add some more details to that cedar in just a moment. So now you see some reflections. You see some light going across the surface of the water. 
And let's go ahead and fill all this in down here. It gets darker as it goes into the shadow. So um, as it gets darker, add some more browns to that so that you're filling in that area. Now let me go back to this uh, the cedar tree and let's work on actually making it look more realistic. So again, what, how we blocked this in initially was a dark green. We were using a little bit of black, brown, and some of this uh, hooker's green. Let's go back now and make it look a little bit more realistic. So we're making a dark, dark, dark green color. And I'm using the fan brush. And I'm going to actually, if you just barely tap it like this, you see how you can make it look like an illusion of leaves? And we do have some sky holes here that I need to come back in and make some blue in there. But let's fill this in and make it look a little bit more realistic as it is in here. I'm getting some brown, some black. And we're just tap, 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 tapping to give this illusion. Over the pond, it's overlapping. And what we just did with the pond, now wherever I had uh, gone into the um, cedar, we're going to come back over now and make it look like this is overlapping it. Okay, so that's for the cedar tree. To fill in sky holes, let's let that dry a little bit. Then you can take some light blue and just dot in between these little cracks and crevices that you see, and that will create the illusion of the sky coming through. So now that this is done, I think we need a little bit more dark right in here to match along with this. So I'm going to switch over to a detail brush and get that same dark color because this is all in shadow. So this needs to be much darker. Some darker greens. And then we need to add a little bit of light and darks to the um, dirt that is in this area right here. Now, this is the point of contrast. Here's what you need to remember when you're doing a painting, your eye is always drawn to the sharpest point of contrast. That would be right here. This is a sharp line, a hard line. And so that's why your eye is taken right here and then the view takes you into the painting. So this part really does need to be a sharp line. So I'm going to get some darker brown and have this much more uh, definition to it right there. And we can create some dirt by adding some browns in here and kind of uh, nestle it in like it is going in between the plants. I'm picking up some lights and dark browns. Now it's giving the illusion that is actually in between some of the plants. You can actually overlap some of these plants into the dirt. And um, I'm making kind of a thick mixture, so it's giving it texture. So it does look like there is actually some texture of some dirt right there. Okay, let's get busy now on some of these, um, these trees and add some more detail to the trees. So for this, uh, let's start back in the back. This actually underneath these trees are very dark because it's in shadow. So let's create that shadow and then we'll have uh, more uh, definite edges coming up. I'm gonna get a medium flat brush and we're going to create this dark area underneath these trees. And it goes up the hill. And there is a shadow over here. And as you see, once you lay the shadow in like that, of course you don't leave it that way. You wipe your brush off, and now we're going to come back and blend and soften. And that's just a scrubbing motion like this. You're softening, blending. And 
And I think I do need some more of this um, pinkish neutral color to have it mix in with this. So you can see the illusion of it going up the hill with the strokes I'm making. And I'm bringing it down to the sidewalk. And the colors that we're using, again, it looks like a salmon color. It is a mixture of the golden brown, white, and that rusty color. There we go. So now let's do some of the dappled light that you see. We were creating some light and shadows. We see dappled light coming through different places. And now more of a definite where the shadows are. So let's go back to that mauve color and continue the shadows in mauve up the hill. We're using that purple color that is mixed with a light brown. Let's see how this looks as far as the shadows. Yep, that's going to work. And when you're doing the um, shadows going across, keep in mind that it's light coming through the trees that is casting the shadow. So the design that you want to have of the shadows are limbs that you're actually that are being reflected down into the bottom. Okay, so we've got some shadows on here. Now let's show a little bit more of the light coming through. So I'm going to get a lighter version of what we were putting here. And let's just see if we put in little splashes, dollops of light. I think it needs to be a little lighter than that. So I'm going to add a little bit more white to that mixture and add more strokes of light coming through. And again, you're not going to leave it like that. Of course, you're going to go back and blend. So I've wiped my brush off. I'm softening, blending. You can see how this is developing. So let's get back into this area now and start developing this much better. Um, let's go back with the fan brush and create the illusion of the, um, the flowers that are blooming over the top. So I'm going to get the fan brush. And these crepe myrtles, if you take a little bit of magenta and some white and don't mix it well, I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of that golden brown. And so what you're going to do is you just want a little tap, 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 tap to create the illusion that there are flowers there. So I'm just using the edge of my brush, just the, the tiny edge right here, and I'm creating an illusion that there are crepe myrtle flowers blooming. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to just do polka dots here, 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 here. Think about as if they were limbs hanging down. Okay, that's about all we need there. So I'm going to now go back into some darker greens and add more variety to the greens here. So it's not just one flat color. If you were looking in, into trees, it wouldn't be just one flat color. There would be a variety of color. So that's what we're doing here. Adding more variety. And this should be much darker over here, overlapping this. So I'm just adding a little bit more of the dark green, making it look like it's overlapping. And it looks like we need a little bit more dark green certain places here so that the limbs look like they were coming through. Okay, so now let's go back to the trunks of the trees and define those more. 
Okay, so let's start right in here. We created the dark areas for the trunks. Now to show this, it's going to be this um, rusty color uh, brown and the dark brown. And I'm going to start from the bottom and lift up. Need a little bit more water on this so that it glides, so that you're drawing with the paint. Be very loose. And as you see that I'm using my whole arm to pull this up. And back here. Okay, that's about all you need just to uh, imply that there are uh, limbs coming up from this. And of course, we'll go back over and do a little bit more branches there. Let's go to this tree now. All right, so when we get to this tree now, there is some area that I need to just fill in. Okay, so now we're going to create this tree. Uh, remember what I said earlier, if you want something to stand out, darken the area behind it. This needs to be just a little darker so that as the light is shining on this dogwood tree, it shows a lot more. So let's just darken this area right here a little more. And I'm using just a dark, dark green. And if you mix it with brown, anytime green looks too garish, uh, add a little bit of brown to it and that'll calm it down. So I'm creating a darker area back here. And for this to meet, for the dark area to meet where the ground is, you don't want a sharp edge like I have now. So in order to do that, just scrub some of this green into it. It makes it look like it fades into it. The only harsh line that you want in this whole painting is right here in here and then of course uh, that takes your eye in and then you start seeing all the foliage. So I'm just softening, scrubbing this area to make it look like it's blending in. Okay so now that that is all blended in, let's create this tree. And that's done with a uh, white. It, it's like a gray and white but the way the sun is shining on it, you see a lot of white in this and a little gray on the um, right hand side of it where it's in shadow. So I'm just going to get a very thin mixture of white and grow this tree. As you see, I push down a little bit firmly right here on the trunk because that is where it's the fattest and then lightly with no pressure glide it with the brush to create the limbs of this tree. Now at any time, if you decide you make a mistake and you don't like what you've done, you can take a damp paper towel and wipe it off and then redo it. So that's the great thing about acrylic painting, it's very forgiving. Okay, I think that's all we need to do for that tree on the white. Now let's get that gray color that is on the other side of it that is in the shadow. So I'm creating um, a gray now with adding some black to that mixture that we had. And again, once you put it in there, you always go back and soften it and blend. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to soften and blend. So you lay the color down, then you go back and soften and blend everything so that you have a soft illusion. Now I do think this looks like it's floating. This looks like it's anchored more because of the darkness underneath it. So this needs more dark underneath. So let's go back to a shadow color. This color that we had before and let's anchor this down. Okay now I see some other shadows way back in here. I think I'll add some more and going across here with this mauvey brown color. And I do think it needs to be just a little darker, so I'm adding some dark brown. There we go. Now it looks like a shadow. And back here, shadows. Some shadows coming across here, meeting the sidewalk. 
and dark right in there. And again, I'm going to go back and soften and blend everything. Okay, now as we're starting to work on the details of this, I can see that some of this needs to be just blended a little softer. So wherever I'm seeing gaps, I'm just going to take a damp brush and just fill in. Soften and blend. And you can just take a damp brush with no paint. Just soften and blend everything. Along this edge, some of this dirt running into the plants. And I think at this point, let's do this tree over here on the edge. So we need to show this a little bit more. So with a detail brush, um, add a little bit of um, dark brown. So I've got some brown here and I added a little bit of black to it. We want this to show up a little bit more. And it's way back there in the dark bushes back in the forest area. So it doesn't show up a lot. And then you have an overlapping here of more limbs. So back to the fan brush. And this painting is almost done. It's about three quarters done now. Just adding a little bit more foliage with this fan brush to fill in some areas. Adding variety to where the crepe myrtles are so it's not just all flat one color. And it looks like there's some gaps back in here that we need to fill in. So you can see from the time that you started blocking in color now you start doing some last minute little details. Um, another thing with um, a lot of foliage and bushes are vines that kind of hang down. And I'm going to take a, a, a tiny detail brush. I almost want to call it jungly like Tarzan. But a lot of vines that, that are just loosely hanging around. So let's get the, fan, the um, detail brush and very loosely, loose paint. Watch how I do this, just the illusion. See that, just an illusion that there are vines hanging down. And they can overlap each other. Okay, and I wanna add just, I think, a little bit more detail to this tree. So at this point, you're really just adding details. The painting is just about done. Um, I think I want to add a little bit more splashes of light along this sidewalk. And I see some areas here that I need to fill in for some gaps. And you can add your own details. I always say as I'm teaching, if you had Van Gogh and Monet in the same class, the paintings would look totally different. It's up to you to add your own individual touches. So what I'm doing now is just adding a few leaves. Let me show you how to make the sky holes. If you get some light, light blue and just touch these areas where the sky is coming through, this is called sky holes. And if it looks too much like a polka dot, you can always come back to your, your greens and surround it a little bit and break it up. But this gives the illusion that the, the sky is coming through. Okay, I'm going to add just a few more details now to the sidewalk of making the splashes of light. And this painting is just about done. So there'll be some splashes of light. And I'm using this um, magenta white, a little bit of golden brown. A little bit of light coming through and going down the path. And there's some areas of green here that you can just fill in. And I think that's just about it on the painting. Um, make sure you have uh, the light coming across here. I'm going to lighten this area just a little bit more. But you have all the details now to doing this painting. And the rest is just filling in as you choose to fill it in. The last little things to finish this painting up, you'll look at your example and wherever you feel like you want to do some little 
dollops of light, little splashes of light. The painting is just about done, depending on what you want to do with it. Um, let me talk to you about signing your painting. I am so guilty of this um, that I have signed it many times too far along the bottom edge. And here's what you need to remember. It's called rule of thumb. Where your thumb is, halfway up, put it on that bottom edge of your canvas, and halfway up your thumb is where you should sign. It's called the rule of thumb. And you sign your painting with a color that is in the painting. You wouldn't suddenly sign it in red. There's no red. And wherever there's one color, you want to echo another color. And I think that's why this painting is so appealing, because you not only have this color here, here, and here, and your eye has a tendency to dance around, and, you, and it has uh, a uniform feeling to it. So when you sign your, your uh, painting, I signed it in a dark brown. Just choose a color that is in your painting. Use a detail brush, and you want to make it very dark so that you can see it, very loose. Have a wet paper towel handy, so if you don't like what you do, you can always wipe it off and redo it. And I steady my hand right here so that it has something to lay on. And I'm gonna sign it, but say I don't like the way this signature looks, it is very easy just to wipe it off and do it again. And that's why acrylics are so forgiving. So the painting is just about done as far as the details. From here on out, you decide what you want to do with it. Um, keep in mind that if you go on our website, akincenterforthearts.org, you can see all the workshops that we offer and the dates and how to sign up. And thank you for coming with me through this journey down the path at Hopeland Gardens.